Welcome, welcome, everybody. My name is New York John, and if you're with me here, that means that you are driving the wrong way down the cannabis World Wide Web disinformation superhighway. You couldn't find your way off, you cut a hard right, and you ended up here at the Indoor Promised Land. And you could see what this is, right? You belong here. We want you here. You deserve to be here. And I could show you a little bit about how I got here, particularly today about these five mother plants that were growing behind me. And I say growing, but really they're just hanging on by a thread because tonight, tomorrow, the next day, well into the middle of the week, we're going to be harvesting, taking these plants down one by one, cutting off fan leaves, getting them stored for drying, getting them hung probably in here as we have a little bit of a gap between this harvest and the next series of plants coming into here. Probably a gap of about two weeks. And that works great because that gives us all this space to hang plants, to use our conditioning, our dehumidifying, our humidifying, whatever it takes to give the right environment for drying. The best environment, frankly, for drying. And normally I just hang them up in the attic but sometimes that's been too dry and sometimes it's been too hot. So it's nice to have this space to use for that. Anyway, what we're here to talk about today is we are drawing to a conclusion the story of these five mother plants. And I'm really pretty proud of how this turned out. We took some good orderly direction about how to train our plants, how to shape them, topping them first, thinning branches next, lollipopping lower stuff, choosing which branches are going to get to make it to the trellis or to make it to our canopy, if that's your situation. And here we are. However, these plants were not trained with flower in mind. These plants were not trained really at all. These plants were topped. They were topped at two and a half weeks or so. They were topped about 10 days later, starting with five tops, then going to like seven tops, 10 tops the next time, about seven days in between because RDWC Hydro grows pretty fast, especially once it's rooted and starts to take off and veg. You could turn what would normally be a soil plant for like a six week veg into like a two and a half week veg if you play your cards right, but because it happens so fast, we had to top early and top often any plant we grow in here. But that's how we intended to shape the plants that you see behind me, these five mothers, to shape them for taking cuttings, many, many clones from over a period of their life. Never had I intended, and this is, this is the truth, never had I intended to put these plants into flower. We were, if you're watching this in the future, you don't know this, but this happened uh, we're uh, showing you this uh, about mid-September, but uh, early June and mid-June, we uh, still have a lot of um, demand for clones. So we like to get those out the door, and this time we found a good genetic we were very happy with, people had tried and people had liked. So my normal clients came and we put, honestly, like 300 clones out the door, 280, 300 clones out the door with these plants. Well, you take cuttings differently than you would top a plant, right? Topping a plant, you choose the node that you want to break the plant in two or the node on the branch at which you want it to like sub-branch. And you would fim a plant sometime along the way if you were trying to get the right bushy chalice shape you know, that we know for canopy gardens and doors. So really this didn't have any of that um, panache. It didn't have any of that um, style because it wasn't meant to express itself into flower. But clones at like two and a half weeks, clones at four weeks, clones at six weeks, even more clones at eight weeks, and the plants looked like Charlie Brown's Christmas tree, if you guys remember that one. It's just branches. <laughs> Cut. Everything looks like it's dead. 
Uh, but we still have them under lights, and I'm a little lazy, and I left them under lights thinking, like, maybe we can get some of this sub-branching of sub-branching that had been created over this time of this other one's very bushy plant that had been cut back, like if you over-pruned uh, the, the shrubs in your driveway or, or on your yard. Like, if you cut them back, like, you know, to stop growth. They look basically dead. But after a couple days, all of the sub nodes and the nodes along the way, everything up until where we cut, started growing all at the same time. And I thought like, okay, here's a fun experiment. I have a light. They're actually sitting under one of these four by four bar fixtures, all of them kind of pressed together, all five, like one, two, three, four, five. And, uh, and they were well within that footprint, even with the bushiness, because like there's no leaves overlapping much to speak of. There's no nodes, you know, no branches overlapping much to speak of. But everything started getting tiny growth heads. So I went to all the branches that hadn't been recently clipped for cuttings, and I thimmed, like about two days into this. After 10 weeks, those are the plants that we brought down here into flower. And if you follow along with some of my older videos, um, I think uh, New York John's number one biggest garden problem, uh, part one and part two, it explains having brought these down into the flower room in the system behind me was actually eight pods, not five. So I had to make a decision that I'm going to spread these plants out because, man, like one week down here, which would have been like... Yeah, like the 10th week of veg, because we just ran the lights at the same, like, 16-on schedule to kind of get them acclimated into this system with the chiller. And because the change from the DWC 5-gallon buckets that I ran them in, you know, in a separate veg location, you bring them down here into RDWC, that, uh, ups, you know, that veg area is a sterile res situation. You know, we're not running beneficials or uh, microbiology. You bring it down here, and we are. And we have a lot more aeration, we have a lot more flow, and the plants, they like to benefit from setting aside about five days of veg at the end of veg to come down here and do that process here as they acclimate to the new system. But we chopped this system from two rows of four, kind of staggered from each other. A lot of you guys have seen my previous videos and you know what the system looks like. You know, two rows and they kind of like fit under a five like footprint we chopped it up that was that second video the indoor promised land or new york john's set, you know, first biggest problem video if you look back like that shows where we cut it how we lined it all up and we put these five plants in what is 15 and a half feet of length and five foot of depth no it's really like four foot eight or four foot nine feet of depth off that wall still spilling out here past where the light is and the light not quite touching the back wall gets us like it's you know i've exaggerated but it's not quite five feet it's a few f inches short but still i could have probably run four plants four of these plants back here and had them not touching so much and that's the nature of this video because i just wanted to go over for you guys who hadn't been privy to what we've done down here with these plants and most of you have most of you have heard me talk about this in the last few weeks it's a good looking garden and I like to share it. It's a hard garden to teach from, but I'll leave that aside for now. This is a post mortem pre harvest. We don't know what our weight is yet. I'm not even sure what things look like at the middle of this plant, as it's really hard to get an accurate view, just kind of poking your head in. And at this late in flower, we really don't want to be messing with things too much. So I'm curious. And I hope you guys are curious too. I'll give you the facts and you guys can free wager a bet, a guess on what my final weight in the garden behind me is going to be once it's dried. Does that sound like fun? Because I thought you guys might like that and I'll find some sort of homegrown giveaway for the person who's the closest by grams. Here's the facts. These Spider Farmer 860 watt LEDs above me are about two feet above my canopy. 
and I've only run them at about a max of 730 watts. So we could say that this 5 foot by, let's say, 15 foot, just split the difference, 75 square feet of space, of canopy, has gotten coverage by 2200 watts. It's hard to imagine because the general consensus, if these were a high-pressure sodium garden, would be that, yeah, that's, that's just over two, two, 1,000 watt lights running at full capacity. And it's still a little more than three 600 watt lights with like double XL hoods close and spreading that light far. I can tell you it hasn't been as much heat and I know the difference. But getting those 2,000 watt, two 1,000 watt high pressure sodiums and metal halides to cover this footprint of garden, I still would have been short. We would have had to have them on movers, and then we wouldn't have been getting maybe equivalent watt at every like square foot of the garden because of the movers. The middle still would have gotten the majority of it. So with that in mind, 10-week veg, if you think that matters, 5 foot by 15 feet, 75 square feet, under a total max, and not the whole time, at the end like a mid-flower, at late mid-flower, 700 or so, let's say 730 watts from these LED fixtures. What do you think my overall yield is going to be dried? And let's qualify this. I'm not going to weigh the, the larf. There's larf towards the middle. What I'm going to be cutting is like the top 10 or 12 inches, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then a top, you know, 7, 8, 9, whatever, nodes. So let's say maximum one foot. I'm gonna cut them all. I'll make a future video after I've got them all in a basket, all right? And you'll see they're all gonna be kind of the same length of stems. And uh, we'll see in a couple weeks, probably about 11 or so days, what our dry weight is going to be, give or take a little bit of like sugar leaf. I take all the fan leaves, I take anything with the stem off before I go into drying. I think that's been a good practice for me especially with my drying situation, and especially wanting to control as much humidity. Some people believe that like fan leaves bring sort of a nitrogen taste or a hay taste back into the bud. I don't know what all those things are, but I know that I've had the best results not taking off any sugar leaves, just taking off anything with a stem, a leaf. Taking that off as far back as I can with scissors and throwing it in the bin, and we hang it up a couple inches to dry you know, each stem. You guys will see, I'll give you update videos, but Hey, here's a chance to, uh, let, let's say, uh, uh, a whole uh, ounce, okay? This product goes to the winner, and we'll work something out for that, okay? You know, we'll exchange information. Uh, but I hope a lot of you can wager a guess. I'm not going to tell you what my guess is. I'm not even going to guess, actually. I haven't really given it much thought, because it's a bit of a different garden than I've grown before. It's not like we're filling the same canopy size the same footprint with plants that are three or four week veg with multiple tops closer together maybe more than eight or is it is it more than what we'd expect from larger plant count if i ran this whole thing as like sea of green 15 feet by five feet with one week veggies do you think there'd be a giant difference if all things considered were successful, all things being equal, do you think there'd be a big difference in the yield? Anyway, so that should be fun. Let's take a look at what Chad is saying, because I think there's probably a few of you guys in here. 30 of you watching, that's a great increase from 17 of you. Some of you must have told your friends and neighbors. And I appreciate that, because we could use as much traffic here as you could bring us at the Indoor Promised Land. We enjoy bringing you this content. We're trying to get you more, trying to fill some of our time with uh, on, the, on the channel with other people's programs. So that's been a thing that we've been considering here, and I hope that you guys stay with us to see or even be a part of our growth.
Yesterday we ran a program, a live program, at this time on Saturday, which we gave a memorial celebration for our mentor slash tormentor, the Grow Boss. <coughs> and I think it went well. We had a lot of technical difficulties, as it was the first time that me and Chronic from Chronic Grows have collaborated and shared simulcasting of our live programs to bring you what was a stream yard. We had a little bit of a panel, some guests visiting. We had a little bit of fun with one of our guests. You'll have to go back and watch it. Next week, at the same time, Saturday at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Chronic Grows and myself will also be running another program in which we attempt to breach the topic of topping. And is it good? Topping, is it good? Should I top my plants? If not, why not? But if so, what are the uh, qualifications, ramifications, what are the implications of topping or not topping a plant if you're growing indoors? So we're going to take our time and really go over the issue, see what some of both sides, people from the internet, personalities who you might know, might have a take on topping your plant indoors or not topping your plant and why they might do that. So I hope that you guys join us. We'll put up a live alert. You can click it for notification so that next Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you'll be able to join us at the Indoor Promised Land, and we could talk about that. And I'm sure it should be interesting. We might have a surprise guest. So, fingers crossed, all right? Next Saturday, 1 p.m., check my notifications. Again, you should go hit the like and subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like this sort of programming. And if you want to see more, hit that notification bell, because otherwise you may not find out until a couple days later. We have people who hit the notification bell and still don't get notified till the next day or the day after just because that's what pops up in their subscribers list. So, you know, like, subscribe, tell your friends, add us, give us that little at symbol, leave a comment. That really helps us out. And it feeds the fucking beast that is the YouTube logarithm. Some of you guys might be on Instagram. You can find me at Indoor Promised Land on Instagram. We offer some of the same content, oftentimes much shorter reels. You can help support me and my efforts if you go over to Spider Farmer, spiderfarmer.com or spiderfarmerled.com. It's their official site. You could use promo code New York John, all one word, John with an H, New York John and you receive, I think, like 8 or 10% discount, you can get these fine fixtures there now, or the SE 7000s, or the G1000s if you have 220 power and you have high ceilings and you want to do all that. Show that you support the channel, show that you support me, show that I'm using my time efficiently, getting their products represented to you, and showing you guys what I've done this round with these products. Also visit papsribbon.com and they'll give you free beer. Just tell them I sent you. Another one of our sponsors. We're proud to present to you Raid Shadow Legends. Yes, Raid Shadow Legends. One of the greatest mobile games you could ever play. Has all sorts of in-game purchases. Basically, you can't win without in-game purchases. Visit. Uh, you'll see their logo here or here or here for Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> God damn. Okay, so gigantic plants never meant to go into flower. How did the flower go? And I'll tell you that. Too much fucking work. I cannot recommend growing plants this long in veg in DWC and, and I'll I'll go ahead and put up the uh, waiver to that the caveat is if you're doing well not if you're killing shit you're gonna get this at 10 weeks I think we could have gotten a bigger plant at 10 weeks probably eight weeks were we training the plant rather than cutting it for its resources of tops because we'd be taking less 
less of the plant and I believe the larger body would have gotten to its point where we brought these plants down you know to start here at the last week of veg at 10 weeks you would have had a bigger plant I would have had a bigger plant so indiscriminately taking toppings for financial gain with no regard for the life of your mother plant is not a good idea for how to put a plant into flower and succeed however We do see that it succeeded. And that, my friends, all of you guys in the GB Army, all of you guys who have stayed here at the Indoor Promised Land and have been here and repeat your success, you all know this is a testimony to the strength, the resilience, and just the pure raw fucking growth power this short duration plant has. You can call this a crop because it's like vegetables. You don't really have many vegetable trees that grow the next year. You don't have many vegetable plants that you planted even by seed that grow the next year. You have to do it every single crop. But a plant that gets this big, even with all my human failings, even with all the shortcomings, even the fact that I'm not outdoors, this ain't the outdoor promised land. Outdoor is all promised land. Don't put it in too shady a spot. Boom! Fucking instant success with cannabis. That's the power of this. That's why they call it weed, dude. But this is a testimony that even if you cut them down to fucking nothing, even if you turn them into literal fucking nightmare fuel scarecrows of dead chopped up plants. And this is, I think, why so many failing gardeners, so many plant killers out there, think they're still doing well if a thing bounces back. This garden is, well, we're yet to see what the weight is. The weight may be the proof in the pudding. But this garden is not an efficient garden. And if one of the metrics, metrics of success for indoor growing of cannabis is how fast can you get, you know, your full potential of yield every time, then I'm not sure that this is the fullest potential of yield in the shortest amount of time. I mean, I told you what my canopy size was. That wouldn't change if I filled it with, you know, 12 branches per, you know, four square or per, per square foot over all five by 15 square feet. Or if I have shorter branches here with a lot of tops, I'm yet to find out what the result is going to be. And I hope you guys are excited. And I hope you submit, uh, put it in the comments what you think the weight is going to be on this dry, no larf. I'll show you guys everything we put into the bin to weigh. And we'll make sure that we all agree that that's a proper representation of the mm, commercially viable flower elements of this cultivar. And we'll all agree. And uh, closest to the gram weight is the winner. But it's not an efficient way of growing. I mean, I could have... I could be halfway into my next flower at this time. And it's a short flower. It's eight weeks. Like, we are just at, like, eight weeks in a day. I would like to have taken them down a couple days ago, but I didn't flush early enough. So even considering all of my failings, these robust fucking ladies, these big, fucking fat, fertile mother plants still came down here and made a decent showing. And I hope that you'd agree that was the case. But really, we're going to see when we get weight. Because it's not about how you veg. That's not a win. It's not even about how well you flower. That's not the win. If you're asking me, have you fulfilled the full potential of the plant in the shortest amount of time with the most amount of weight? Quality weight. That would be the win. Also, I have to maybe factor into that equation the amount of energy we use to do it. And I think you could agree that 2,200 watts over 75 square feet is pretty efficient. And it's not as if we're using incandescent watts, where we've created an awful lot more heat. We haven't really had to run the AC at its max output. And it's just a window unit servicing this room. It, the room is 15 and a half by 10 and a half. So, you know, we've uh, saved on some energy, but that would be a factor if we wanted to put together an equation, a metric to guarantee to find 
uh, what would be uh, a win, the best win. Not just a win, but like the over the top, the best win. We have to throw in the also the equation of grower talent. And I hope that's what I can bring to you guys. Because the rest of it's just like, can you follow some basic instructions? Can you not fuck around with things too much? In Hydro, it's like, can you keep your levels right? Can you, like, always be without drifting outside of, even not once, an acceptable environmental situation, an acceptable water temperature, an acceptable amount of, like, fresh reservoir? Like, all these things you have to factor into, and I think that's where we say it's growing talent. So I challenge you to guess along with the rest of you what the total weight in this room is going to be let's say like i said 12 13 days from now when they're ready to start curing we'll take everything off the branch we'll remove all of the excess leaves we're going to leave a little bit of sugar leaf because i leave my sugar leaf on for you know trim so you could factor in those couple grams per ounce however you guys want to those are the qualifications of what's going to happen with these uh, buds when they come down and when we get them to drying and when we take that weight, that dry weight, off of the stem. You can decide for yourself if the watts was entirely based on weight, or if some of it was plant shape, or if some of it was mostly grower talent, or what the ratio between light as yield and quality as grower talent. You decide. I'm very curious to see your, your thoughts about this. And if you're tuning in well into the future, we're going to leave the comments up so you can see what things were. You know, spoilers, if you go to the end or if you scroll down, you're going to see what the weight was. I'll put up a post also congratulating the winner here in these comments for you. Lots of work. This is another thing. Not worth it to me exactly because a lot more work, a lot more pro just prolific growth of leaves... You know, I take off five leaves and I get like two back the next day on every single stem, on every single branch, and all of these plants. It was always happening. It was a constant battle. And I'm accustomed to that in the same amount of like square footage when you've got a little bit of spaces between like your big donkey dick colas, which we can agree these are not. These are mostly tops. These are kind of uh, a genetic that expresses itself without a whole lot of compaction. We've grown this in the past with a three and a half week veg. And we have the same thing. Like, it just doesn't do a cola. It does like little indica dominant kind of golf ball nugs. 12 inches down, in this case, like mostly 10 inches down the stem. So we've got mostly tops here. But constantly picking off leaves. So much more work than I had ever done with younger plants with a third of the veg time. So if you combine that with the fact that we could have been halfway, if not more, into veg with our next garden, I guess it's going to have to be weight that determines whether it was worth it. And in that, in, in that equation, we're going to have to factor in, like, time. Did I, I lost weight on... Did I lose weight not bringing another crop halfway to fruition in the same time that I grew this one crop to finish? I can't tell you that I know. I have a hunch, but that's also why I'm not telling you what I think the weight is going to be. And I hope that somebody, I'm sure someone's going to be real close. I'm sure a couple of you guys are going to be real, real close. If you guys know the factors going into it, the way that we've learned, I think you could figure it out based on the light. But this is also an extraordinary situation, so maybe none of us have been in. I certainly haven't before. This is the first time we're growing this way. Your guess is literally as good as mine. So with all the extra work and me being lazy, that kind of tips the scales towards it being like not a great garden to teach from. That would be the jumping off point for what we're doing coming up here at New York John's Garden at the Indoor Promised Land. The next eight plants we bring down here, maybe six, we're going to give them a normal like three and a half week, maybe a four week veg. Maybe we'll take those six and whittle them down to like five and put them in the space behind me. And those are all also the same breed as these, clones from these, orangutan titties, all right? And they're already like a week or so into veg. One of them has entered into the Coco for Cannabis Plant Training Grow Challenge. If you haven't heard of Coco for Cannabis, 
can go to coliverCannabis.com and check them out. They have a registration. You can be part of the community there. Uh, you see a lot of our affiliates there, a lot of our friends in, in the industry, people who are growing, people who are winning over there. But you also see a lot of new growers, and they have this plant training challenge where they're going to flip, or we're all going to flip, by October the 1st. Now, I've entered my sample in just, I think it was September 28th. And it was just a rooted clone, just rooted into the five inch net pot. So I'm playing a bit of a catch up, but I'm in the toppers group. And there's different groups for different type of plant trainers, right? So every it's not a competition. Everyone's kind of there to encourage one another. If you're interested, go ahead and check it out. Coco for cannabis, C-O-C-O -C -O for cannabis, not with a four with a regular spelled out cocoforcannabis.com and you can watch along as I submit my grows. In fact, I need to probably put a picture up of the plants that we're going to see in that challenge. The one plant uh, in the next day or so, maybe even tonight. We'll see it there tomorrow. But, of that round, the remainder of those plants are coming down into this area. And the next thing we have after that, which are many weeks still behind that garden, that we're going to bring into the smaller area opposite from where you're looking here, the smaller area, is from Grow More Fire Genetics. You guys know him as a Body by Vio. You might know Grow More Stress Less. He was so kind when I asked. He sent out 10 of his Frosty Cherry breed that he made. Uh, I think it's got Tropicana Cherry in its lineage and also uh, White something or other. I'm not sure if it's The White or white. I don't have to check that out, but you could check it out. You go over to Grow More Fire Genetics. You could find them on Instagram, but they have their own website where you could purchase a wide variety of the seeds that they've been breeding over there. Vio's a great guy. It's a great... I mean, he's the guy who influenced me, who inspired me. He was my aha moment when I saw a 4x4 garden that he was growing in one hydro bin, like a 13-gallon hydro bin like DWC, and he had to stand on like a medium-sized stepladder to show the top of the plants, which were still fucking running into the lights, which were all the way at the top, and just like 24 inches of fucking donkey dick cola. You've never seen such a thing, and that to me was my inspiration, and that's what we're trying to do here with the entire Indoor Promised Land, that we could show you growers, and I could show you my efforts to show you that you guys could be here. The potential of this plant is mighty. And sometimes all you've got to do differently from what you've been doing to get success is to take yourself, you know, get out of your own way a little bit. And we could show you how to do that here, but definitely check out Grow More Fire Genetics. And if you want to on YouTube, Grow More Stress Less. He's got a few videos. This guy is hot, hot stuff, man. His own music video, his own fucking, like, he got a rap group to write a song for him. He's been breeding. He's an amazing grower. He's an amazing breeder, and I'm really looking forward to growing that strain here, frosted cherries, at New York John's Garden at the Indoor Promised Land. That's what's going to be the next thing. But you guys can watch along with me in the next upcoming weeks as we bring the last round of orangutan titties, the end of the line, probably no more clones, probably this is the last time we're going to grow these. We're just trying to fill a garden and give you guys something you can learn along with me about how I train the plants. Because for me, all the metrics of what you put into the reservoir or if you're going into like a bucket with soil or cocoa or whatever, they kind of, it's personal. Do, your, do the thing that, you know, you're supposed to do with that. It's different in hydro than it is in cocoa. And I'm not going to try to delineate that it's somehow the same. But the orderly direction could be the same if you follow like a reasonable amount of PPMs for a reasonable amount of weeks of veg. Like, there's a good way to do it. Give it 100 PPMs every week. Don't give it 100 extra PPMs every week. But first week should only be a 100 ppm solution if you're feeding. Second week, 200 ppm. That doesn't mean feed in the first and second week, because really you should be feed, water, water, feed. So if you fed 100 ppms in the first week, and you've watered in the second week, and you watered in the late second week, early third week, then in the late third week, you're feeding 300 ppms a solution if you're feeding again. That's a good way to do it. It's kind of what we follow here. In fact, in DWC, we got to bring those ppms even further down because it's entirely accessible all the time at every point of the surface area of the roots sitting in the water. It's entirely accessible, so we dial things back. But to go beyond that, like, I believe it's about shaping. And I hope you join us next Saturday as Chronic and I explore the topic of 
should we top our plants? Because if topping is one of the principal methods of shaping your plant, I think that's like the first thing you want to do. Take a plant that's grown straight up with one stalk and top it and let it make two or four stalks, depending on how you do it. Then take those stalks and top those and let them grow in short order with light, close, and low to keep them short and stack nodes. And then thin those ends or, depending if you're just trying to go for an all apical cola garden versus a like LST or like a more artistic LST scrog, like your northern scrogger, you know, he's got different methods, but it's a lot of thinning after that. You know, thinning every top and when to thin them. And when to, here's the most important thing, and I'll tell you about this in the upcoming series. When to stop shaping your plant before flower, before you expect to go into flower, I believe is the thing that most determines the final shape of your plant. Maybe you want, like, you know, every end, every branch at the very end of every sub-branch to have, like, two short little nodes that grow out, and that's all that you get in the stretch and flower. Maybe that's how you get a fantastically full scrub. But if you're growing colas, you're not going to want, like, you know, fucking Siamese twin tips of the buds that only grow, like, or only able to put on, like, two or three more nodes after they've been topped right before flower. So for me, it's kind of important when to stop. And like I told you guys with this, my last thinning was like two weeks before we put it into flower. And I think that's appropriate if we want to get extra nodes, time to grow extra nodes off of that last thin. If you're thinning to get all of your sub nodes to come up, right, like you would be, then maybe you want those sub nodes to only be two nodes. But I let them run till they were like five nodes before stretch. So everything stretched the same. Branches upon branches upon branches. Most likely, the thing that you guys would want would be a reasonable midway between this sort of crazy fucking bullshit, you know, and whatever you had in your last grow. If you're looking for more tops, I mean, where do buds grow? Can anyone answer that for me? Where the fuck do buds grow? Yeah, Dankaholic. Get noids, exactly. Get noids. Buds grow on branches, man. That's right, Viking. Buds grow on fucking branches. If you don't have the branches, where are you going to fucking put the buds? If you're growing a plant that you're going to let grow one fucking main giant, you know, spear cola up the middle and allow everything else to grow and call it a three or four or five week veg, like, what was the fucking point? The main one's doing all the work. That's the one that reached the highest. That's the one that gets all the growth hormone. That's the one that gets the attention. Could topping have fixed that? Find out. Tune in next Saturday for my show with Kron on this place at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday. Um, unless otherwise rain delayed. And I think you know why that would happen. But for now, that's our plan. If you guys have any questions about this grow, I'm going to pay a few minutes of attention to chat. But I need you guys to know, like, this is the last time we see this. If you see this garden again, well, maybe just keep it to yourself. You could call it bullshit, because at that point, it's a green screen picture behind me. And you're probably going to see fuzzy edges around my hair, because I have a couple, like, upcoming appearances on other people's stations that are scheduled already, and I ain't going to have a garden behind me to show you. So probably what I'll do is just sit in front of a blue wall or a black wall or what have you, speak to them on camera, and show you guys, or their audience, some pictures of what this was. And uh, if you follow along with us in the next coming days, we'll uh, show you some glamour shots of the buds behind me um, in our community postings. So stay tuned for that. I can't thank you enough for being here. I want to look at comments and chat here real quick, and there's a bit of a lag. So I'm going to see if anyone's got any crazy questions here for me. Or if you miss out right now, put them in the comments, and I can answer to the best of my ability what we did with this garden to get this like this, why you should or shouldn't do this in your garden, and the ramifications of doing so, please remember, if you're tuning in late, take a guess at what the yield's going to be. Five plants, 15 by 5, 75 square feet, right? Under 2200 watts max of LED wattage, okay? Put your answer in the comments. Oh, man, it's fucking thrips. God damn it, dude. I literally just washed my hair. Viking King says there's thrips in my hair. 
This isn't gray hair. This is actually spider mite webs. Every morning I wake up and I press them down and I comb them back, but like they're always making more. They seem to like my hair more than they like the plants, so I'm going with it. That's my um, insect and pest control uh, solution is try to get them to go to my head. Man, I've seen some gross stuff out there, man. I recently saw someone posted like a kind of microscopic view of some fucking wormy mass that was floating around in their runoff or something uh, on their plants. I was like, oh my god. But, you know, there's so many things out there that are active, like, in soil and dirt. For me, this is the reason that I'm not growing dirt inside. But a lot of you guys, especially new growers, are going to prefer to grow in a medium where there's a little bit of stability, a little bit of buffer, a little bit of dry time, different than this. I don't want to say that the DWC is advanced, but you have to take into consideration a whole new circumstance that uh, if you have a problem, problems happen fast. You know, you have to be on top of your shit. You have to be kind of a little more tending your garden, especially in mid-veg, uh, whatever your veg length is going to be. In mid-veg, when things are really taking off about week two, um, you have to be spending a little more time with the shaping and training of your plant. Because um, if you let it get away from you, like, you know, things can go wild, you know. They might need more light closer or uh, light farther away at a brighter wattage uh, in those veg periods that, you know, one day of not having that t kind of tuned in will give you, you know, a little more stretch between nodes or, you know, you're going to have to remove more in order to get back to where you would, you know, uh, top, you know. Uh, and you don't want to waste time with throwing material away. Let me tell you, we threw a lot of material away from this. Like, the goats got fed pretty fucking heartily, you know, from the amount of, like, little shitty branches and, you know, under branches or sub branches that really weren't going to make contact you know, things that had, like, happened probably at the beginning of Stretch, but by the middle of Flower, like, had kind of become a thing. Like, well, you can't be in there absolutely every day with flowers, uh, plants these big, with this many fucking, like, tops, with this bushy. I can't even barely get to the back side. Really, I couldn't. So maybe factor that into, like, your uh, projection on the yield is that, like, there's about a third of this plant on the other side that my hands have not been able to touch. I'll show you something. This thing, that's how I grab the ones in the back to put them on yo-yos or to pull off leaves. you got to have this thing, and it only reaches about <laughs> like 20 inches, so like I'm reaching all the way over. There's a lot of stuff back there that didn't get groomed or defoliated as much as we would have liked to. Again, that goes into the factors of like what made this garden great or what's going to be some of the drawback on uh, growing a garden like this. So yeah, we had a lot we, we threw away, and some of what you have to consider in a success is like how much did you throw away. However, I think there's an acceptable amount of waste, especially if you're making this many branches. And the waste is like, you have to throw some of that away whenever it's growing, as soon as you can catch it, before it becomes a problem, before like little branches in the middle start to try to start growing buds on them, because that's taking away the energy from the rest of your plant. So you do have to be in there to some extent. And I don't make any, like, uh, big festival of defoliation. I don't believe in the schwazing thing. I don't think that would work for a garden like this. I think if you schwaz this, where, like, I don't know, they say flower day one and flower day 20, you take off, like, every fucking fan leaf, whole plant, all the way through top to bottom. I think that would have put these plants into shock and killed them. In fact, I've never grown that way. I know one guy who does, and he grows plants that only have, like, four or five colas to them, and I think they veg for, like, two weeks. It's really more of, like, a mixed sea of green. So the the branches only get about that tall. So taking all the leaves off of them at any one point in time, it's like, it's still 100%, but there's still enough like vigorous vegging activity going into flat and going into the first week of flower that first week of flower is really like post veg. It's not really flower. I mean, flower doesn't happen until you start getting bud side developments. You know? So with that being said, like, I don't believe in that, but I still had to make like a day, I think about four weeks into flower where I went through and I took off all the extraneous leaves. Not all the way all the way through, but at the top where they were blocking and shadowing other bud sites and to remove all those bud sites so that I didn't, in further weeks, waste any energy going into basically fucking booth. Stuff we can't even use as hash. Stuff that's going to fight, you know, the density and the thickness and size of the buds above them that are doing well 
alone, even with no leaves, that mass will shadow absolutely any light hitting the lower buds. And that's why you get the larf, is because as you're growing density up top, it doesn't matter how many leaves you remove. I mean, photosynthesis really doesn't work that way. Plants don't feel and see and experience light the same way as we see it. So looking at the mid-plant and seeing, like, it's a little dark, like, well, if it's absolutely black, then, yeah, probably there's no light, no meaningful light getting to that area. But, you know, some of the ways down, like, I still had leaves that had never been picked off that probably grew, like, an early flower in the middle of the plant that were still doing well, even, like, now. If I searched, I'd find some green leaves halfway in because of the amount of and penetration of the lights that we're using when we're using LEDs. We have better penetration. The light's more focused on an area, but it goes farther, all right? It's more like par watts. I don't even want to say the word, but like that's the math of it. Like it's more par watts in any one little area. All right, so I went ahead and sold out. I said par watts. I think next week's show is going to be about VPD or PPFD or UMOLs or whatever. You guys can tell all your friends that I fucked up and I sold out on the first show. <laughs> I'm kidding, man. I'm kidding. But look, thank you guys for joining me. I think we've hit our time here uh, with the program. Plant grabber, yeah. Plant grabber. Yeah, all of you guys already know. No one needs to ask any questions currently in chat, it looks like. Uh, I do look forward to seeing you guys Saturday. Please tell your friends, tune in. If you're interested in seeing, a, I think, a positive discussion about, like, should I top my plant? Should I top my plant? Why would I top my plant? Who doesn't top their fucking plants? Why would you not top your plants? That's what we're going to talk about at the Indoor Promised Land, Saturday, 1 p.m. Thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for sticking and staying. If you've watched from the very beginning of the video, awesome. If you missed the early stuff, maybe it's because you didn't have notification on, or maybe you have a life and don't check your phone every time it goes off. Or maybe you've got notifications on YouTube turned off entirely, which I don't blame you. But thank you for being here. I'm New York John. If you got here, it's because you turned a fucking hard right turn off of the disinformation superhighway of cannabis on the internet, on the interwebs, and you ended up here where you belong at the Indoor Promised Land. Thanks, guys.